Hello everyone. Today we'll be comparing newly released 4070 Ti supercars to see which one is worth buying and which one we have to skip. So it's a continuation of our series of analyzing the card qualities. So the first cast is the Asus 4070 Ti Super Tough Edition. Here we can see it's more or less similar to the regular 4070 Ti, at least the design wise. There is a little bit dimension changes. Now let's have a look at the card tear down. So here we can see that the card has a direct contact for both VRM and VRM chocks from both sides. And some thermal plates at the back plate, which also is a plus. And when we'll be analyzing the PCB, we can see that the card was covering the VRM chokes, VRM chips from both sides. Only the capacitors is under the direct airflow through the heatsink. And no other components is missing the direct cooling. So that's why this card is getting the very good rating for the cooling. And this is again, I want to emphasize that this one is the cooling section. So this says component, and this all is the component cooling. This is not the component quality. The components, especially the VRM chips, is here. And as I used to say in my previous videos, the only drawback which I saw and higher failure rate which I saw is a alpha omega one which is AOZ and if you will go and watch the other uh, youtubers who is doing the repairs for the GPUs you will see that a lot of cars 3090s 3080s which used to have like EVGA ones alpha omega VRM chips their chips are failing and for example I bought the 3090 and that card already was equipped with the NCP ones. So I guess they at some point understand that this is a lower quality one and at the middle of the life cycle of the 3090 they decided to change from Alpha Omega ones to the NCP. So here we can see that only one card has a Alpha Omega one, the rest is more or less is a good quality. So here we can see that the card has a two phases for the memory and using 10 phases for the uh, GPU core. And it's using the Vishai, which is more or less the same quality as the NCP. They have similar rate of failure, but they are way below than the Alpha Omega ones. So here if we analyze the temperatures. Here we can see that under normal which is like 31.5 and below 35 I consider being uh, almost silent so this is just uh, having like 63 degrees and the hotspot 76 and the memory 72 and again the memory anything under the 80 again I consider is a perfect temperature even though the memory is by themselves they are rated to be run around 105 but again like it can be around 105, but how long it will last in that temperatures. That's why we want to keep as cool as possible. And within like 80 degrees, I consider it's a normal temperature to and not worry about the longevity of the memory chips. And for the core, again, anything below like 70 is pretty cool. 70 to 80 is like that range that you maybe you will consider to ramp up the fans to have the close to the 70, then close to the 80s. So this card again in temperatures is really good. We can see that the normalized temperature test is 59, like 60 C again, it's a perfect. And again, 35 dB, which is like the highest limit of when it's starting to annoy you. So below anything below that, so it's pretty good. So 31 is very good. Again, it's coming for $800 all parameters also it has a double ball bearing fans on the drm faces it's on the lower side but again we constantly saw that it has 
no impact on overclocking and it doesn't matter that if the card has a low phases then it has some kind of low overclocking potential and here we can see like it's almost indistinguishable compared to the other cards who maybe has even more uh, faces so the only issue is the the more faces you have the load per face is lower so the temperatures will be lower but again like if the nine we can consider is the lowest one it's at least one more face above the lowest in this uh, comparison so i can say till now we can say that this if you want to buy by the msrp price we can recommend this card but let's go ahead and compare with other ones to see maybe there is even better values and better cards so the next one is a strix and of course it's coming 950 dollars and uh, it's too much let's say you can just uh add another 50 dollar and get a new 480 super which is much much better card than this one in terms of the performance and again in next series we'll be analyzing the 480 super to see if we can find any good cards at the msrp levels and if we will find it then definitely it doesn't worth buying the strix over that one and also you can buy a used ones 480 a good cards like the there was a uh gigabyte i saw it they were selling like 900 which is a good card so let's see the pcb of strix to see if there is any major differences compared to the tough one here we can see that the interesting thing like me i will say that it's a uh, one step back because here we have a direct contact you can see for the both vrm chips and the vrm chokes here we can say we have somewhat and even this line is not a straight i don't know if this part is covering we'll go ahead and we'll check it but let me open on the black back plate there is no thermal plates let so now let's compare and see the comparison regarding of the tough what's interesting that here we can see that the both thermal plates and thermal uh thermal plates are touching the uh, vrm chokes and vrm chips here it's this line is not straight so this is for the vrm chokes and here we can see that these vrm chokes which is touching this part only they touching half portion because this part is missing And this one's touching from this side. So as they don't have a heat pipes here fully length, I guess that's why they put a little bit thermal pads close to the GPU core, and that's why it's not lined up with the other thermal pads. And it's like not as good as with the top one. And here all these VRM chips being cooled through this metal plate which i already measured in the previous ones is not as good heat dissipation as when the card has a direct contact with the heat sink of main heat sink not through the metal piece like here clear example main main heat sink direct contact here no direct contact with the main heatsink. This main heatsink is screwed, and I don't know where it touches the this metal plate. Again, that's why, even though it has a direct contact with the metals, we are not rating it is very good, but be putting the good mark because some portion of the VRM chips is being cooled through the metal piece but the components in this one even though the control is a mps which is the highest level which we can find in the gpus but the vrm chips strangely they didn't use the mps one they use the ncp 
which is again like if we go and check the other streaks for example here where we can see like here when we check the streaks it's using the MPS but here they decided to save a little bit money and only use the controller from the MPS but the VRM chips they using the NCP again it's not the bad one but like when you are charging 915 like saying it's the top of the lineup you don't have to try to save on the VRM chips the temperatures are good we can see like 62 and the memory 68 normalized 57 the noise level is comparable so I can say that uh, like the VRM phase is 16 power limit is more than like the other cars the highest power limit but again like paying $150 more for this card and even the components and component cooling is not the top level I don't see any meaning doing that so let's go see if we can find any other card which we can recommend as this one is definitely with this price I cannot recommend the next one is the colorful it's a white card there is an, also another color available of this card let's see the tear down now let's see so here, check this one. So what we have here, we, they're using the metal piece to cool down these components, which is not the VRM chips. It's a replacement of capacitors, this portion, and the VRM chokes. It's being cooled through metal piece also. Here we can see one, two, three VRM chokes here. And then the VRM chips one, two, three under this metal piece. So again, it's clearly visible one, two, three. This is for the VRM chips this one for the VRM chokes, this one for the replacement of the capacitors the back plate don't have any thermal plate, plate, plates so we putting OK mark because even though again everything is covered with the thermal plates but the direct contact for three VRM chips is going through this metal piece and here we can see that it has 16 phases and this one is a clear example as they positioning this as a, their uh, flagship card we can see they are using MPS controller and MPS VRM chips which is the highest rated VRM chips in the market for the GPU so this is getting and then 16 phases 303 watt power limit 340 noise level is very good temperatures are perfect but again like handy does so if we'll be comparing these two cars definitely I will pay $100 for this one instead of paying $150 more for this one. We have better temperatures, lower noise, somewhat similar power limit. Again, power limit is not crucial if you are not doing some crazy overclocking with the hydrogen or something like that. Just the regular overclocking. Even this card could be overclocked at the same levels as the 366 power limit card. So again it's not having that much of influence and the phases is again 16 16 I will pick this one $50 cheaper but let's see if we'll find 
even better card with cheaper price so the next one is a gigabyte gaming oc let's have a look on the tear down pictures So Gigabyte as always, in this series they are just killing this game, they have everything covered with the thermal pads and all they have a direct contact. This is the best. And the only downside of this type of cooling that the more heat being transferred from these all components to the main heatsink, the hotter will be the temperatures for the GPU and memory chips. But again when we have a headroom it's better to have like couple degrees more on the core and the memory but much more cooler uh, components because usually if you will watch all these videos when the cards are failing if there is no uh, mechanical failures like bending the card or similar dropping the cards and uh, most of the failures coming from the failed uh, vrm chips and vrm chips they can fail one like reason is the very high temperatures in the long run so cooler they will be the less probability of failure so here we can see that the all the arm chips has a direct contact all chokes has a direct contact that's why this is getting the very good rating for the cooling using the alpha omega uh, sorry using the Vishai SIC which is a normal VRM chips for this card again 10 faces $50 more over the top and MSRP temperatures as I said on high side not much but like the noise level is 36.6 .6 in order to have this this kind of temperatures and also one interesting thing again which I'm constantly noticing that uh, sometimes the normalized temperatures is not correct and this is one of the cases here we can see that the normalized is a 63.6 but again it's a 35 db we have already 36.6 64 if you decrease the fan speeds in order to decrease the noise level and come to 35 it's not possible to get like lower temperature the temperature should be higher not lower so that's why i put this the asterisk and the adjust it to 65.6 it's a rough estimation but again nothing critical we can go even lower if needed like we'll make it like 33 we'll have 68 here or like 32 so this is one of the downsides having very good component cooling but then when all the chucks has a direct contact with the main heatsink, the core runs hot. But again, $50 more compared to this one, what we are getting more? Just 20 watts more for the power limit. And yeah, one important thing. Here we can see the discard. Yeah has a fuse on the PCI Express lane so if something goes wrong with this one at least your motherboard and CPU will not be damaged so I will say these cards are comparable just you are paying $50 more to have this peace of mind that if something goes wrong your uh, other components will be safe so it's up to you which one to pick so I will probably recommend this one also especially if you can find one for 800 it's a no-brainer get this one instead of the tough one but with 50 dollars difference it's up to you the next cards is a game world phoenix let's see what this card can offer us the tear down again you can see the similar story this metal piece the VRM is being cooled to this metal piece. There is only one line here and one two here, which is here we can see. 
one is here uh oh so let's see you see the memory here this is this part you see the hole here and the VRM here and the VRM here so this is the bottom this is the top so the bottom hole this is the thermal plate has a direct cooling with the, this metal piece which is screwed to the main heatsink this one is here is missing so we can see that there is a space here to put some thermal plate maybe it's wasn't like put by the factory or it is, it is not put in by the design I didn't notice this in, when I was putting the excel sheet so I will put this at least what I see I cannot say that this is this is safe to buy because one is missing So unless we'll see another car tear down and we'll make sure that there is a thermal pad here and then we'll assume that it w was missing from the factory but not by the design I cannot recommend this card already it, this card has a flow so this VRM chip doesn't have a direct contact let's see what else we'll find so this one using NCP okay this one has the lowest phases in this comparison 9 it's not so good the temperatures is really good because of bad component cooling less heat being transferred to the main heatsink so it's much easier for the heatsink to cool the card temperature, noise it's perfect but again normalized temperatures again it's it's better than tough better than gigabyte but again when you see it's something like this you have to check the component cooling if component cooling is good that's a good sign but most of the time it's not a good component cooling that's why it's much easier to have these temperatures again 300 power limit is nothing to worry about but again nine phases and bad so you can instantly put this as no go and move forward to the galax another white card let's see and plus for the game world it's 870 dollars definitely no go but this one is $800. Let's see what this one can offer us. Maybe this will be a better alternative to the tough in terms of $800 mark. Here we can see one line of VRM chips. We can see it has a good contact. VRM chokes has a good contact. Again here, you see what I was talking about. Line is like very similar to the game world. The PCB could be the same. Here one, here two. One pad, two pad. So this one has the same PCB but much better design. There is no metal piece between the uh, thermal pads and the main heatsink. Everything has a direct contact with the main heatsink. So uh, we'll see the temperatures for the core will be a little bit higher for this one too. But this is getting the good rating because only several chokes are missing the direct contact and only being cooled by the uh, air coming through the heatsink so temperatures are high you see same pcb same pcb same temperatures but the noise level difference it's almost 7 db difference that's all because of this one has a good component cooling, more heat being transferred, so the fan should work faster in order to have the similar temperatures, more or less. And obviously no normalized, you can see the real difference. So this six degree difference is between bad and good component cooling. 
but unfortunately this one is also using the alpha omega which will double check here yep the alpha omega AOZ which is not a good VRM chips so $800 $800 definitely we are buying the tough one so even though this one has a more faces because they managed to put two more faces here compared to the nine but i cannot recommend this card when we have tough which has a better components now let's go to the next one this usually is the worst card in 4070s and the 4070 Ti's 4060 so let's see what will be here they are doing some strange things with this card even though it's it's a, if they did put a couple thermal plates more maybe it will be really good value card but like I don't know why they are doing that strange things so the MSI Ventus let's see PCB nothing to talk about again one line here we can see this one touching has a direct contact this one has a direct contact even though it's very questionable that I don't see any metal piece under this part they just put it on the fins but again it's at least something it's it's not good because you know the area of contact is so small but i guess they are trying to do something not to have the similar situation as it was with 47 eventus so this one is direct contact this one is a direct contact and this one doesn't have a direct contact so again why you can put some metal piece here and put something for this one and make a hole for the chalk so chalk will go inside and you will put direct contact for this part on the back plate no thermal pads so it's using let's see that's why it's getting the bad rating here yeah, another one oh they are not making here you can see they decided that the, again the memory chip the vrm chips which is responsible for the memory chips can be cooled by the air which i already showed in my previous videos if you are interested go watch that one about the msi gaming x where i measure the temperatures and there is no big difference between this vrm chips temperatures and the vrm chip temperatures responsible for the gpu so they are suffering from bed cooling and again nobody knows how long it will last at least at least let's see in the gaming kicks they were using alpha omega ones this year is uh, ncp maybe it will last longer and one interesting thing things they did i don't know why they put the fuse here so if some failure will happen it's on the power rail it will prevent the gpu core from dying if the VRM just maybe they they thought that you know for the warranty case of repairs to make it cheaper for them because they don't have a cooling for this VRM chips better to put here some fuse to make it less probable of damaging some memory chips and expensive core if one if these chips will fail maybe that's the reason because in other versions there is no fuses but here they put put the fuse so we have to mark these ones as a plus but again 
to have a fuse to fail the, because this fuse will not prevent card from failing. Card will fail, or the, the VRM chips will blow out. When you will send to the war, if it's under the warranty, uh, within the warranty period, it will make their life easier because it will be cheaper to repair. Out of warranty, then you have to repair, it will be cheaper for you to repair, but again, you have to spend money. Why not to remove this one if it's like cost some pennies and then put some thermal paste for one missing VRM chip and solve this issue? I don't know. But the temperature wise is the hottest one. The noise is good, so we can maybe increase 2 3 dB, decrease temperature here and here. But again, when we have a tough version and gigabyte, for people especially who have some cold line issues with the tough, they have alternative to buy the gigabyte and have a, this fuse extra instead of buying the Ventus. So I cannot recommend this card either. It's marking the red. Going to the next one. PNY. Let's see PNY Verto, which I assume that should be their flagship. If I'm not mistaken. Let's see how they organized the flagship cooling. Okay, so very simple PCB. Here we have a VRM chips, direct contact, direct contact. Here we have a direct contact. Here we have a direct contact. Here we have a direct contact. So it's getting the good rating because only a couple of VRM chokes is missing the direct contact. Backplate doesn't have a thermal pad. But the rest is good. And here from this one, it looks like the FE card. PCB, maybe they, I don't know, got the PCBs, then they did their modes, didn't cut this part. It's using NCP chips. Which is good. Eight hundred dollars. Temperatures are on the high side because of the good cooling. Noise. We have a room to improve if you want. We can do thirty-three dB. Have like seventy here, eighty here. Nine phases. Less than half. NCP. SIC is the same. A little bit lower on the power limit. Again. I cannot recommend this card over the tough one. So, it just like this type of cards, you have to buy only if you don't have any option to buy the better ones, like the tough or the gaming OC. When in your country there is a limited supply, then you can buy this card. Why not? Let's see the next one. It's a Palit Super Jetstream OC. Tear down. Let's see. Again, not a beautiful PCB. And we see again metal piece, which instantly going or okay or good territory. Let's see. So direct contact, direct contact. Here, this one, direct contact, this one, direct contact. Again, these chokes has, don't have a direct contact. So this one should be on OK territory. Yep. Back plate doesn't have a thermal plate. It's a nine phase NCP, no fuses. As it's OK, you see instantly the difference. It's running cool. Almost same noise level, but much cooler. Because this one is transferring more heat to the heat sink again than this one. Normalized temps, you can see the difference again. Five degrees difference, same quantity, everything is the same. So again, like I will buy the PNY over this one. Just because of better component cooling because these tempers will not make your GPU memory fail but the cooling difference can make the VRM chips to fail 
And then you can tune a little bit increase here if you want to make it this temp slower. But again, I will not touch it, so I'll take P and Y. But again, also here, so these two cards I cannot recommend. And the last one, the Zotac Trinity. Let's see what this one can offer us. $800. Let's see if this one can beat the tough in terms of quality. Let's open this. Here we can see from both sides VRM chips, they have direct contact. Chokes are missing, so it's in you know, the good territory. Everything is being cooled. Back plate has the thermal pads. So the cooling should be good, yes. Now let's have a look. Using NCP, nine phases. 300 watts you'll see again temperatures is higher than the pallet version who has less effective component cooling noise level very similar to this one so again 800 dollars here 800 dollars here noise level is similar everything is similar power limit a little bit high so i would say from if I don't have ASUS and Gigabyte in my country. From these three, I will buy the Zotac. Definitely will buy the Zotac. But again, if you want to buy for 800, this is our recommendation. If you want to buy a little bit better card in terms of components, uh, safety, then I will recommend the Gigabyte, like $50. But again, like this is uh, just in case of failure. And let's say we can also consider this one as the second or third option, but I cannot mark it as a recommendation. But if in your country this two is not available, you can go and buy this one. And if you want to buy something premium with premium components but like okay so this is like you know i i would say it's better buying the used 480 instead of buying these two cards so that's for today in the next video we'll review the 480 super and I guess the NVIDIA lineup will be fully covered and then we can move to the AMD ones. Thank you for watching and if you are interested in this type of video also I will be doing some different uh, kind of videos regarding the values of the electronics not only for the PC parts. Just consider subscribing to the channel, liking if you have some comments, leaving your comments. I will try to answer all the questions. And thank you for watching. See you in the next one.